Okay guys, welcome back to the Smoky Pastures Barbecue YouTube channel and today we are having a look at some dry aging of steaks. Now dry aging at home is something I've been wanting to give uh, a go at for a while and uh, I've got these uh, banquet bags from Misty Gully uh, from smokedandcured.com.au and I gotta say I'm pretty excited so what they are is they're, they're a bag that you can seal your meat into. They're a membrane that allow uh, uh, moisture to pass out without oxygen passing back in, which would therefore sort of spoil our meat. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, these two pieces of uh, ribeye or scotch fillet. One is going to go into a normal cryovac channel bag, and the other one is going to go into the um, dry age banquet bag and then we're going to dry age it for around about three weeks 21 days see what happens now ideally I do want to make a disclaimer right at the start when we lose moisture we lose weight um, and some of that is from uh, some of the weight loss is from the moisture but then we also have to trim off the outside pellicle that's developed on the meat at the end of it because otherwise it tastes a bit funky. So whenever you dry age anything, you're gonna lose weight from moisture loss, but you're also gonna lose some weight from the trimming. Ideally, the best way to dry age uh, meat is to dry age a large full piece of whatever the cut is. So a full uh, roll of scotch fillet or a full rack of T-bone or whatever, whatever it is you wanna dry age you get less loss if you dry age a larger piece at, at, at any one time. But given this is the first time I've ever done this, I just wanted to take it easy, and we're pretty much just dry aging um, uh, a couple of steaks individually here. So it's not as recommended, but um, it's something to uh, dip our toes into the uh, into the world of uh, dry aging. So yeah, I'll show you a little bit about what they look like when they're in the bag and how to set it up uh, to get them sealed up in the back seal. Okay guys, so we've got our regular back seal bag there. Already sealed this one up. This is about to go in the dry age bag. So you can see dry age bag's fairly long. So we're just gonna trim it up a little bit, probably to about there, uh, just so there's not too much loose bag in the fridge. And then give it a go in our conventional vac sealer. So there's this little channel buddy here. Apparently helps um, you seal up the bag a bit easier, so we'll see how we go. Okay, so we've got it set up here with our channel buddy in there, slightly overlapping. Um, and then we've got it on manual setting. So I'm just going to see here, it's not going to seal anything up. You can see that that's, that is starting to suck all the air out of the bag. It's a bit slower than what I'd normally expect. But it is, it is starting to suck and what we want to do is make sure that the bag here has maximum contact with the meat. So it is a little bit slower than what I'd normally expect to see with my regular vac seal. But it does look like that channel buddy has done the trick. So what I'm going to do is now hit the seal function. And that should seal it off. And we'll probably probably put a couple of extra seals on that just to be sure. Okay, so we're on the cooling rack in the fridge here now. Got our dry age one on the left. Um, got a good seal. I gave it a little extra reseal. Keep that membrane uh, nice and in contact with the meat. Um, because the meat's going to shrink a little bit as it dries out, I've also just put a few of these little elastic ties around it and then I've got my wet age comparison here in the general cryovac bag so I'll check in in about a week and we'll see how they're going okay folks so we're at the 10 day mark here and as you can see very interesting color on the dry age piece starting to get that sort of blackness what I'm happy with though is quite good contact between the membrane and the um, uh, and the meat and then our just plain old cryovac one as a uh, as a control bit of a size difference but 
I, I, I'm not putting that all down to moisture loss. This, this was sort of squeezed up a bit, um, just to make sure that that um, dry edge bag was making contact with the meat at all times. So yeah, maybe checking in about another 10 days. All right, folks, so we've uh, reached the 21 day mark. We've got our two steaks here, just taking them out of the fridge. I've weighed both of them, uh, and our wet aged, traditional wet aged cryvac steak is still at about that 500 gram mark. Um, our dry aged uh, steak has uh, reduced down to about 360 grams. So that's about, you know, one third uh, weight loss there. And uh, so we can attribute that to the loss of moisture. Um, it's maintained really good contact with the dry age bag. All looks pretty good. Have a little smell. Can't smell anything um, unpleasant about that at all. Uh, so it's looking promising. So I'll just put this to the side for now and we'll open up this dry age bag. And we'll have a look at what we've got here. So 21 days is about as long as I wanted to go this first time round, just to make sure, you know, that I um, didn't take it too far and, and end up with a bad product. So opening it up. All right, wow, that is, even another, Smell test, absolutely no unpleasant smell. Uh, we are gonna lose a fair bit of this when we trim it up, but like I said, it's just an experiment. I'm probably not gonna cook the whole other uh, wet age steak either. Um, but yeah, look, I'm really happy with that, but I think once again, it would work a whole lot better on, a, on an entire muscle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this outer pellicle, um, this outside real dark looking skin uh, that's formed from the dry age process. It's not pleasant. You don't want to cook that at all uh, So I'm going to trim it up and try and reduce uh, The loss of yield as much as possible and then I'll give you a look at um, what it looks like after trimming So cheers. All right guys So I just finished trimming this up and now we're back to something that's sort of resembling What looks like a, uh, a scotch fillet steak or ribeye steak? Um, it's also now without that hard pellicle on there very very tender so that's pretty cool now i'm getting a little bit more excited and just remember when we do this with a uh, a full muscle uh, we wouldn't have the the loss um, that we have quite a bit of here i mean i tried to cut it as thin as possible um, but at the end of the day you're going to get a lot of moisture loss but hopefully uh, not too much loss in the actual sort of protein uh, the physical structure of the steak so what we're going to do, I'm going to pull this one out uh, and I've decided I'm just going to cook them both as is. That's a fair comparison and uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, folks, we've got our two steaks out of the fridge, seasoned lightly with salt only. Uh, not going to add anything else to the flavor of this cook today. Got my Weber kettle set up here, indirect heat, full charcoal basket of lit olive pit briquettes. Got our ink bird here with a couple of spare thermometers. It's going to reverse sear these today, so they're going to get cooked indirect to 125 degrees Fahrenheit internal. Uh, the uh, dry aged steak's probably going to go a little bit quicker because it's thinner, so it's just going to have a little bit longer rest time. But other than that, that's about the only difference to how we're going to cook these today. So I'll bring it back in when it's time for the sear, but hopefully. We're not adding too much other flavour, we're just going to actually see the difference in the flavour between the meat based on the 21 days dry aged. So uh, I'll bring it back in for the sear. Okay, we've got our rested steaks here. Looking good. Put these couple of charcoal baskets together and topped up the coals. So it's now time to slap them on. Probably about 45 seconds per side. And I'll check back in after the flip. Okay, starting to get a bit of sizzle there. A little bit longer on this side. And I'll do the edges. And I'm pretty much just going to take them off and give them a taste test. All right, folks, we've got our two steaks here. Uh, they've seared up quite nicely. Um, simply just going to slice into these, and we'll see how we go. So. 
crust is nice and go through this one here the uh, non-dry aged off the bat feels a little bit more tender um, probably maybe due to that moisture uh, content I'm not sure I'm going to slice off a little slice of each just to do a taste test really happy with that crust actually it's not often that I cook a steak with just plain salt these days I'm usually using some sort of barbecue rub um, but anyway got our two pieces here and give it a go so obviously a lot smaller This pulls apart tender. Oh, hmm. There's a really interesting flavour going on with that dry aged I It's hard to put my finger on it. Um, but I like it. So let's have a crack at the non dry aged. Hmm. That's really interesting. Um, it doesn't feel feel like it in your hands, but when you actually start chewing it, I think the dry aged steak is actually quite a bit more tender. Um, this is really nice, though. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm going to say that this is a little bit different. Uh, I like both. Uh, is the dry aging worth it? Look, if I'm honest. Probably not in just doing a single steak, but in the future I definitely plan on doing another video uh, and, a, and a discovery process about doing an entire cubed roll to reduce some of that wastage and so hopefully we can slice some bigger, uh, nicer steaks out of it and do a do a bit, bit better comparison job than, than I did here. But at the end of the day, that's still really delicious. Um, and something quite different. I'm, I'm going to give it another little go. Hmm. It's almost like this one has been seasoned with something. Um, whereas this is just uh, all that usual beef flavour coming through. So anyway, I'm going to finish eating these and I uh, hope you liked the video. Please um, like and, and subscribe to our channel, uh, it makes a big difference and um, we'll be putting out plenty more videos like this in the future. Uh, this is not the only dry aging that we're going to be doing, uh, we'll definitely be doing a little bit more uh, and um, yeah, looking forward to sharing it with you. Cheers!